Hello everyone, it's Jay, and today we'll be going through problem two on the pre-workshop. So we see that there are a lot of words in the question, but we're given two reactions, and we can try to go through the important information using those. So we know that in our first reaction, we have Na2CO3, and we're given its molecular mass. That reacts with calcium perchlorate to form a solid CaCO3, and we're given its molecular mass plus another aqueous product. Now, in our second reaction, we have CS3PO4, which we're given its molar mass, reacts with the same calcium perchlorate to form Ca3PO42 solid, which is also given, we're given its molar mass. Now, we are told that we have a 15 gram mixture comprised of Na2CO3 and CS3PO4, and that when we react that mixture with our calcium perchlorate, what we get is a 12.34 gram solid precipitate comprised of CaCO3 and Ca3PO4. And now the question wants us to determine the number of moles of CS3PO4 in the initial mixture. So, like I said, there are a lot of words, but let's try to boil this down to some equations. We know that we have a 15 0.00 gram initial mixture. And we know that that's comprised of Na2CO3 and CS3PO4. So we know that the entire 15 grams comes from the mass of Na2CO3 plus the mass of CS3PO4. And that gives us our 15 gram mixture. Now, we know that we have a second mixture, that's our product mixture, which is 12.34 grams of solid precipitate. That's entirely made up of CAC, CaCO3 and Ca3PO42. So we know that that is going to be the mass of CaCO3 plus the mass of Ca3PO42. Great, so we've written our our uh, situation in terms of mass, and we notice that in the question we are not actually given any masses to substitute in here. However, we are given molar masses, and we do know that we are solving for the number of moles of CS3PO4 in the initial mixture. So we know that we can express mass as the number of moles times molar masses. So let's rewrite these masses in that form. So for the mass of Na2CO3, that's also equal to the number of moles of Na2CO3 times its molar mass, given in the red informa information as 105.99. Now for the mass of CS3PO4, we want the moles of CS3PO4. Note that that's what we're solving for in the question times its molar mass, 493.69. For CaCO3, we're going to get the moles of CaCO3 times 100.09. And lastly, for Ca3PO4, we want the number of moles of Ca3PO4 2 times its molar mass of 310.18. Great, so we've rewritten all of our equations, but we notice here that we have two equations and four variables. Moles of Na2CO3, moles of CS3PO4, moles of CaCO3, and moles of Ca3PO4 too. But in order to solve a system of two equations, we can only have two variables. Now this is where these reactions we are given can help us, because we know that CaCO3 comes from the reaction with Na2CO3 and we know that they are in a molar ratio of one to one. We know all of our moles of CaCO3 come from our moles of Na2CO3. So we can actually rewrite our moles of, Na, of CaCO3 as equaling our moles of Na2CO3 because of that one to one molar ratio. Now our CS3PO4 is what forms our Ca3PO4 too. However, they are not in a one-to-one -one molar ratio. We see that for two moles of CS3PO4, there is one mole of CA3PO4 2 formed. So we can substitute in here for 
moles of CS3PO4. But we need to account for that 1 to 2 molar ratio, so we multiply by 1 half. And let me give ourselves a little more room here. Great. So now we have two variables only, moles of Na2CO3 and moles of CS3PO4. And we have two equations, so we can solve for our variables. Now, we're going to solve this as we've done in our previous system of equation mental math problems, except of course, with these numbers, we will want to use a calculator. They're not very pretty. So we want to solve for moles of CS3PO4. So when we're selecting for a variable to eliminate, let's eliminate Na2CO3. So in order to do that, why don't we take this bottom equation, multiply it by something that will turn this 100.09 into 105.99, and that will be 105.99 over 100.09 because with the 100.09 in the numerator divided by the 100.09 we get 1 multiply that by the 105.99 and then this term ends up being 105.99 once we do that multiplication all right so we can subtract our equations and we can get our net equation so this term becomes 105.99 through the math I described earlier. So these terms actually cancel. Now, here we're going to multiply 1 half times 310.18. We'll just plug that into our calculator. We want to divide by 100.09. And then once we do all of that, we're going to multiply by 105.99. and Finally, once we've done all of that multiplication, we're going to take our answer and we're going to subtract it from 493.69. So we do all of our multiplication, and what we'll get here is that we have 330.726, and we have to account for our moles of CS3PO4. And now we'll do the same thing to our 12.34 that we have here. So 12.34 divided by 100.09, plug that in, multiply by 105.99, and now we take our whole answer and we subtract it from that 15. And what that's going to equal is 1.93259. So we've reduced this to one variable, one equation. And now we can divide through by the 330.726 term. We'll get the moles of CS3, PO4 are 0 0.005843 moles. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful in showing you how we can apply the knowledge of systems of equation that we go over in mental math to chemistry problems.